Storytelling is a vital element in our human nature. It's how we not only communicate, but how we share our own experiences with others. Good stories grasp the attention of the reader. They provoke emotional responses from their audience and can be used as a rallying cry for united action against a certain cause or viewpoint. In this short video, I aim to present how stories and storytelling have a powerful role in inspiring individual and social change through Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird and the influential poetry of Maya Angelou. Harper Lee's novel was heavily inspired by her childhood growing up in the 1930s in a rural town in Alabama with her father who worked as a lawyer. The parallel between she and her father can be linked to the relationship we see in Scout and Atticus Finch in her novel. To Kill a Mockingbird was published in 1960, a time of major social and political change to the rights of African Americans, where a fresh perspective on racial prejudice in Lee's novel would have been an important message for all to hear. Maya Angelou was a significant part of this civil rights movement alongside other political figures like Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X, and her poetry reflected her rise against the hardships she experienced in her childhood with abuse and discrimination. And she too shares a similar message seen in Lee's novel that should be appreciated and ultimately understood by her audience, everyone. Harpley's novel To Kill a Mockingbird follows the events of Scout including the many encounters she has with her father, Atticus Finch. In Chapter 9 of Lee's novel, Atticus has taken up the court case of Tom Robinson, a black man falsely accused of the assault of Maya Well. Atticus is a man of high integrity, and accepting this case goes against the community's prejudicial beliefs, which tarnishes the family name, and Scout is confronted about it at school. Because of Scout's short temperament, she would rather resolve the conflict through physical matters, but Atticus reaffirms her, you just hold your head high and keep those fists down. No matter what anybody says to you, don't let them get you goat. The imagery of keeping the head higher than the fists is an important lesson that Harper Lee's audience can learn from the character of Atticus about exhibiting integrity and by also standing out as a symbol of change within their community. Being able to stand up for what is right is key, and Maya Angelou integrates this idea into her poem, Still I Rise. In stanza 6, Angelo utilises anaphora to assert her confidence in what she believes and that nothing will make her give in. You may shoot me with your words, you may cut me with your eyes, you may kill me with your hatefulness, but still, like air, I'll rise. This violent choice of vocabulary emphasises her commitment to her cause and that these mere threats won't scare her into submission, proposing a call for action in her audience and community. Thus, a common theme can be linked between Angelo's poetry and Lee's novel communicating the important message about rising above adversity with integrity for the benefit of not just the individual, but also being a catalyst for positive change within society. In To Kill a Mockingbird, Harper Lee also explores themes such as perseverance and bravery through the use of characters in the novel. We, the readers, are introduced to Mrs. DeBose through the perspective of Scout and Jem as a cruel old woman. After she spoke harshly of Atticus, Jem destroys all her camellia bushes in anger, but through yet another display of integrity on Atticus's part, he disciplines Jem by making him read to Mrs. DeBose for a month. At the end of chapter 11, the month ends and Atticus informs Jem that she died soon after. He also reveals that Mrs. DeBose was a chronic heroin addict, but that she attempted to prove to herself in her final days that she could die beholden to nothing and nobody. And according to Atticus, she was the bravest person he ever knew. Harpley's choice of emotive language in this scene shows the intense respect that Atticus has for Mrs. DeBose's perseverance, especially her courage, which he defines as, when you know you're licked before you begin, but you begin anyway and see it through no matter what. This theme of perseverance and bravery draws parallels with another one of Angelo's poems, Caged Bird. In this poem, two birds symbolically represent the contrast of individuals in society, the first bird being free to name the sky its own, compared to the second bird who stalks down his narrow cage. The contrast of tone in these two quotes clarifies which bird is clearly receiving better circumstances, seen through the harsh consonants found to describe the misfortunate bird. Due to Mrs. DeBose's condition, the analogous relationship between her dependence to heroin and the misfortunate bird is clear. Their wings are clipped and their feet are tied, 
but regardless of both their situations, they open their throat to sing. Therefore, the message being reverberated through both these texts is that despite an individual's own struggles, they can still demonstrate immense perseverance through trials and display true acts of bravery, instilling a sense of hope for social change within a community. Through the investigation and link between Harper Lee's novel To Kill a Mockingbird and the poetry of Maya Angelou, I hope you are able to pick up on the shared social narrative that these two texts share with each other, that we as a people need to be able to stand up for what is right and find the courage to persevere through adversity to bring about individual and social change in our world. Both texts share similar themes of bravery, courage, perseverance and integrity and reading these texts together can highlight the themes to provoke an awakening within ourselves as individuals and also society as a whole to positively change our approach to the challenges we face every day and how we realise the brave and startling truth that we, this people, have the power to fashion a climate where everyone can live freely. That is when and only when we come to it.